uh, Seth's Paradise Pantry or Paradise Brew and Cheese. Today we're going to make a brown bitter beer. And we're going to go through the steps so that you can make it at home. Don't be scared, it's not that bad. Um, let's go over the ingredients real quick. We've got some Golden Light malt extract that we're going to use for the base of our beer. We've got some London Ale Direct Pitch Yeast Activator. I like to use this one, it just seems to have a really good yeast flavor. Over here we've got all of our uh, different hops we're going to use. We have our, when you go with a uh, amber type malt, dark malt, or a dark beer, you want to use dark malt. Gives it that nice flavor. Um, we got some coffee malt grind and Munich Light. We've got some star anise, we're going to add for a little bit of licorice flavor. We've got some Irish moss. The Irish mosh helps clean out the beer, makes it clear, and a sock we're going to use. Let's get started. Okay, first thing we should do, or should we should have done, is activated our yeast. Um, if you just read the instructions on the back, you'll feel inside there's a, a little pocket that kind of activates it. You can just set it on the ground, get it pushed over in the corner, and just, just try to break it. Didn't break. I just want to pop that sack inside, make sure that it's broken. And it's going to take about three hours um, for this to get all, it's just going to start swelling up, and you'll see later in the video. But we just want to make sure that that pocket is broken, and let's set that side. Check on a little bit later. Some of our equipment we're going to be using is a book. We're going to keep track of everything that we do. We don't have to be too incredibly uh, intent, intense on this, but what we can do is just take notes so we know what we did or did not do correctly. And if those high-tech people, we have a tablet here. We've got an app on here that I like to use called Brewer's Friend. It helps us determine exactly what we're going to end up with with all this different hops. Something that's un it's very predictable, but if you're not using some kind of tool, you may not know what you're going to end up with. And over here, we're going to test our alcohol level, see what we're at. We like to have in mind um, what you're trying to do before you ever start. So what we've already done here is we've decided what we're going to do. We've got that. We've got our our uh, inventory up here. What we're going to use. We wrote down how long we're going to boil for, and uh, pretty much what we're going to the whole recipe. We can invent our own recipe at home. And as long as you have everything clean, there's really no reason you can't be successful. Um, I have a little thermostat here just to check temperature right before we uh, throw in our yeast. That's kind of a critical thing. We don't want to throw in the yeast when it's too hot, when it's too cold. Um, to start with, we're going to come over here. We're going to top off our two gallons of water using this. Now I got this water right out of my tap. I'm lucky enough that I have spring water and uh, and it's perfect. There's no chlorine, there's nothing in there that's gonna affect the taste of it. Um, sometimes the water that you get out of a spring can be too hard, but mine is uh, is good enough. So we're gonna start this, we're gonna get it nice and hot. We got two gallons in here. And we're gonna start the boil process while we get everything else ready. Okay, while well, that's heating up, let's work on sanitation, which is a very key element in maintaining uh, the cleanliness makes taking a good beer is having good clean equipment. I personally, I don't like to use Star Sand. I know you probably will comment saying you should use Star Sand. I like using Clorox bleach. It's fairly safe. And when it goes down my drain into the, the ground at my house, which I have a uh, septic system, I don't want to. I don't want to clean and kill all the bacteria. It's nice at being at home that the yeast that I pour down there kind of activates my septic system and keeps it clean. Therefore, I use just Clorox bleach. If you come over here, you can look. You can see that I've got six gallons of uh, water that I've added, about a half a cup of bleach in. I like to have it so that when I pull this out, I just have a, a, a fairly strong smell of bleach. Nothing too intense, but enough to know that it's there. That way you know you're getting a good, clean um, sanitization. And I have enough in here, and here in the pantry, What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill my whole fermentation vessel right here with water, chlorinated water. It's just going to clean it out, sanitize it. I can let this sit all the while while my water's getting boiled.
We're just going to pour that in there. Fill it up and you can see that I put about five gallons in there, but I made some darker marks because I like brewing four and a half gallons because when my yeast activates and my foam goes crazy, it doesn't bleed out through my system. I can just keep this. And what I've got is that what I like to do is I like to keep two five gallon buckets full of chlorinated water. One here that I just kind of soak my equipment in, one that I can reuse and just kind of switch them out as they get old, one to clean all my, my, uh, my fermenter in. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in all our uh, grain that we're going to use to kind of give us some color in the beer. Get a little bit of light Munich, just a little bit of sweetness. I'm going to have a little sweetness. We got some uh, malt, coffee malt. Now the coffee doesn't give you coffee flavor, it's just kind of the color that they've designated to, uh, to give. But all obviously the darker, darker the malt, the darker the color, the darker the, uh, the flavor you'll get in the water in the beer. We'll just throw that in a sock. We'll just soak, set that in the water. Basically with extract brewing, pretty much what we're doing is we're eliminating that grain part of the beer making. They've already gone ahead and done the grain and put that in the water, made it something uh, that we can ferment and then we're going to add some color kind of what we can do. We're just going to throw that in the water. And right now, this vessel right here is just going to, when you're boiling it for one hour, the san it's going to sanitize itself. Obviously, you want to have clean hands, but we're just going to get that in there, kind of mix it around. We're going to want to use some tongs from here on out as the water gets warm. What I like to do is come in and just stir it around, pick it up. It's going to bring out more color than if you just let it sit there. And what we're going to do with this uh, grain, we're going to start the heat process from cold and, and we're just going to leave this in here until it boils. And when it starts to boil, that's when we're going to pull these grains out. Easy to do, not, not too complicated. It's going to add some color, a little bit of flavor. We just want to have, and what I like to do, I like to have a container to just kind of, kind of keep things clean as I'm using it. So, or a clean plate or something to just kind of cover it so that it's uh, it's clean as we're big making the beer. Okay, so what we put in there on the grains is we put two pounds of coffee malt and one half pound of Munich light. Um, and let me remind you again, there's really no, there's you can follow recipes if you like, but just do whatever you think you feel like you want to do. Just write it down in case you end up liking it, which you probably will, because all craft booze, brews end up real well. And if you come over here, you can see that um, getting a lot of color. That clear water has turned as kind of a dark color. Um, we're just going to keep letting that water get warm, kind of just pick it up, let it drain some color out, kind of stir it around. Okay, so now let's talk about this malt extract. What we've got here is CBW's Golden Light Pure Malt Extract. Normally, if you're going to do a dark beer, start with a dark malt. But this was cheap enough, it was only $14 for two 3.3 pounders. So I just thought, what the heck, I'll just throw some grain in there um, and try it that way. Um, this is unhopped malt. You can see that it's just concentrated, unhopped. And what we want to do is, during while that's heating up, we want to put that in a uh, container and just let it let it warm up. Just kind of get the whole container warm. That way, when we pour it out, it's all it's not sticky and gooey, which you'll, we'll show you in a few minutes. We'll keep this other one over here by it too, so it's easy to grab. And, and in the process, let's go ahead and put all our dark dry malt extract. We're going to use three pounds. Basically, this is going to increase. The amount of alcohol in our beer. We want to get up seven, around seven percent. Um, the higher the alcohol for you, those of you that are trying to get like 10, 12, 14 percent alcohol, good luck. The higher the alcohol, the more hard it is for the beer to actually ferment all the way out to where you get a, a clean, crisp beer. You're going to always have a little bit of sweetness in there. You just, the yeast just can't eat all of the sugar in it. So if you're trying for to go above eight, nine percent, um, just get some advice, get some get some pointers on how to, to baby the yeast to get it to be able to ferment out. Um, if you stick with a lower percentage of alcohol right now, at, you know, anywhere from 4 to 7%, you'll have much better success. 
what I like to do is just dump this malt extract in a little bowl before we add it. And I'll show you. And I would show you why, but when you put that over the, I'll just describe it. When you put that over the boiling steam as it comes up, it just, it collects and sticks to the back of the package. Just set that over here by the container that we're going to put it into. Let's check on there. You can see already that we're getting quite a bit darker, which is good. We like nice dark. We're going for a dark brown beer. We're going to make it a little bit more bitter than a porter or a nut brown ale. But we're not shooting for a nut brown ale. We're shooting for a bitter brown with hints of coffee, hints of licorice, um, just whatever we think we can get out of the different hops. I my intent on this beer is to get the worth the earthy woody spicy just basically feel like you're eating drinking dry dirty water um and in saying that i don't want to drink dirty water but i just want to drink something that's just that's just kind of in that realm um, that you can pair with any kind of cheese or food or steak um i like drinking dark beers that's that's what i like dark beers and ipas Okay, what we're gonna do right now while this is boiling, we got everything set up. Before this gets too hot, let's just go ahead and open up our can. Um, show you what the malt extract looks like. It's really good, go ahead and try it. Even if you're trying to use a, hop, a hopped extract, it's just really good, it's just really sweet, strong, high calories though, so be careful you don't wanna drink uh, too many calories. Wait for it to be beer is basically what we're trying to make. Let's just uh, clean that lid off. I don't want to get rid of any of that extract. It's valuable stuff. Go ahead and taste it if you like. It's really good. I want to put the lid back on. And the reason why we did that now is because pretty soon that's going to be too hot to touch. We'll want to use a, a cloth or something before we add it to our beer. Let's go ahead and check on this over here. See what you can see, we're trying to, it's getting really close to boiling. Go ahead and use a lid if you like, it It uh, doesn't really matter. When you boil over an hour, you might lose a little bit of liquid. Um, I don't know how much, not really important because we're gonna top it off with fresh, clean water anyway. And we're gonna use that, frame, that clean, fresh water to cool down the wort to get to a, uh, um, a fermentable temperature. You just go ahead and don't be afraid to just pick it up and, let the flavors just fall into that water. That's gonna be our beer, that's what we want. We want all that grain to just, to flavor it. See, it's getting real dark now. It's just beautiful, and you can just smell the malty grain boiling into your nose. You know, like I said, we got three and a half pounds of grain malt in there in one sock. You can do it in separate socks. Um, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what I want to give you a little bit of details while we're waiting this for this to boil is on the on the Brewer's Friend app. What we've done is we've gone in and we've taken um, the amount of ounces we're going to put in, the amount of alpha acids, and the boil time that we're going to do it. So we could figure out how many IBUs we're going to end up with. Obviously, we want to give it some information. We want to tell it how big our boil is, what our batch size is going to be, and how much alcohol or, or what our uh, original gravity is intended to be so that we can come up with a fairly accurate IBU rating. Um, on our hops packet, you can see that this is Columbus hops. It says 15.7% uh, alpha acid. Well, basically, we if we put in this information, we can predict how much bittering we're going to get. This is going to be a pretty bitter uh, brown beer, but we I like bitter. I like the woody, intense, earthy flavor, and I'm going to try to get this beer as dry as possible. And you'll see in part two that we're going to add in some uh, walnut wood. Um, you can do, you can add oak chips, walnut chips, mesquite chips, whatever you like. There's nothing saying you can't do it. The only thing I would suggest doing is uh, boiling or steaming your, uh, your wood that you add in the dry hopping process. And you'll see in part two what we do for that. I wish you could put smell on the computer because man does it smell good. That's what's going to be in our beer. If you smell it, you can taste it. 
Okay, now that our water is boiling, you, which you can see it's just barely starting to boil. At this point, it's gonna turn off the heat real quick. We're gonna already have a bowl sitting here. We're gonna pull out that with the water. You can just see that just, oh, just all that malt is just, just draining into our beer. And we're gonna taste that. Um, if you take a video of that, how dark it is, you'll see that it's just brown. It's what we want. That's what we. That's what we intended. Let's get all that. Throw that in here. We can just set that at side to side. Smell it. Um, you could actually make breakfast with this. Just throw it some milk. It actually tastes really good. You could just eat it raw. It doesn't matter. It's just you could be like a cow and eat some barley. Okay. Now that we've got hot water, we're ready to add our malt extract. It's a little bit hot on the base. Let's go ahead. And that off we've got it nice and up hot up the temperature in our boiling water we'll pour that on there we don't want to lose that stuff what we want to do is we want to scrape it out with a spatula get in there get every ounce out that you can because that's your beer that's what gives you your alcohol your flavor everything that you need I like to scrape it out with the spatula Keep our nice clean thing right here. Grab one of these, pour in some hot water. Now as, as I'm videoing right now, I'm smelling all that stuff that we, all that barley we put in there. I'm smelling a coffee. I'm, I'm kind of getting that feeling that we're gonna, we're gonna get some coffee flavors in that beer when we, when we taste it in about five weeks. Throw that out, I wanna get majority of it out of there that you can and we'll do the same thing with that one after we've added the malt extract out of the container we throw it in there and make sure you grab a beer we just want to stir that and bring it back to a boil before we add our malt extract now that we've pretty well got to temperature what we want to do is we just want to pour in our malt extract after we turn off the temperature and you'll see what happens when you add this malt extract we just want to throw it in there, throw about half of it in there. We want to grab our strainer, or not our strainer, or whisk. We just want to whisk in, chop up that malt extract as we uh, add it. We don't want to add too much too fast, and especially turn off the turn off the uh, temperature so you don't burn it, because it'll sink to the bottom and then burn if you don't. We just want to get it all in there mix it in. This is going to increase our nutty flavorness with the amber malt, ex uh, dry malt, which is three pounds. You want to just keep adding it. Mix it in with the whisk, break it up. Just keep adding it till it's all in there. And you can see that when you put it over that steam, if you're using that plastic bag, would just start hanging on it, you wouldn't be able to get all the malt extract out. And another reason to turn the temperature off, or do it right before it boils, so you don't have a lot of steam coming into the, the work. After I've added the uh, light dry malt, three pounds of amber, I'm just gonna turn the heat back on. Just keep stirring it with the whisk until I don't feel any chunks anymore. It's gonna drop the temperature, so it's gonna take a few minutes to come back to boiling. But we're gonna you'll see what happens when it comes back to boil. So now that we've added our light dry malt extract, we're gonna whisk the bottom of the pan to keep all that extract from floating to the bottom and sticking and getting burned. We're just gonna whisk it real briskly till you don't feel anything on the bottom. And what's gonna happen as this boil starts to come up, it's gonna get foamy really fast. So at this point, stay by your work. Stay by this container, we wanna Make sure that we're in attendance because we don't want to have the boil over blues. Make sure you drink a beer at the same time. Okay, so we've got our uh, malt up to boil again. It's starting to boil. And typically what will happen is as this start uh, starts to boil again, it will foam up. Um, you can see in the video we're starting to get the water to boil. We don't want to add any hops until we get a nice clear boil. All this foam disappears. That's the point you want to add your hops. Because uh, sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't, the foam just goes nuts and it just comes up and spills over and we don't like that.
We're gonna look inside, make sure that the foam is either gone or mostly gone. And we're gonna add one ounce of Columbus hops with 15.7% alpha acid. You'll see that we throw that in there, immediately it starts to kind of foam, kind of bubbles up. You can smell the hops almost immediately. Really no need to do anything, but what you may want to do is come along the edge and just make sure that the Columbus hops just doesn't stick to the side. We want it in the water. We want it to boil and get that flavor out of it. Um, as the water level drops, um, sometimes the, the hops on the side sticks and then you don't get any flavor out of it. So we just want to, through this one hour boil, we're just going to want to keep scraping the hops off the side of the, the boiling pot. Now that we've added our first ounce of hops, we're going to boil this beer for 60 minutes. That will give us our most, uh, most bittering effect. Okay, we're at 30 minutes into our boil. We're going to add one ounce of Chinook hops, 14.3% 14, 14 alpha acid. I'll throw that in there. And also at this stage, we're going to add one ounce of star anise, which is giving a licorice flavor. All that should go together, should go together pretty nicely. I'm going to throw that in there and just kind of stir it around a little bit. You can see in the video that the star anise floats and it just stays in chunks. Um, and if you could smell it, you would smell a licorice immediately. But we're just going to kind of stir that around a little bit and uh, let it go for another half an hour, 30 minutes. Okay, so for the last half or last 10 minutes of the boil, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of Irish moss, which helps clarify the beer. We're going to add one ounce, one ounce of Fuggles hops, 5.2% alpha, alpha, alpha acids. One ounce of Simcoe hops, 11.9 alpha acids. And last of all, we're going to add one ounce of Amarillo. Amaryl one ounce of Amarillo hops at 8.4% al uh, alpha acid. Just throwing it all in. This is going to give us a lots of a flavor and smell in the beer, but not any, but very little uh, bitterness. You can see that kind of turned creamy instead of clear. We got 10 minutes. We're going to just let that boil, and mm, 10 minutes in 10 minutes we'll turn off the heat. Okay, now that we're at 60 minutes on the boil, we're just gonna make one last little stir. Get all that, uh, all the goodness in there, and then it's a pretty hard step. All you do is just turn the heat off. We're gonna let it cool down before we add it to our fermenter. In the meantime, let's go check out, let's go get our fermenter ready to add this beer. So here is the fermenter that's been uh, sterilizing pretty much the whole time. We're just gonna drain out all the all the water that's kind of filled right to the brim. Now that we've drained all the hot, uh, the chlorinated water off our fermenter, we're just going to come in and we're going to sterilize with hot water. Hot water being the key ingredient. We want to get all that chlorination out of the fermenter. We just want to stick our hose in there and get nice and hot. Use plenty of hot water. Get it rinsed really well before we add all the uh, unfermented beer, which we call work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this uh, container. We're going to pull this out. We're going to add the cool water to the fermentation pot. In anticipation of our uh, ferment, fermented wort, or our unfermented wort. We're going to get our uh, funnel out. And that, uh, we're going to put our, we're going to sanitize this just in case the yeast touches the outside of the packet. We're just going to throw that in our uh, sanitizing equipment. We're just going to rinse with super hot water the uh, equipment that we're going to use to uh, put the cool water into the fermenter. Need some nice hot water, rinse all that chlorine off it so we don't have any flavor. We're just going to uh, add cold water to this sanitized little bowl and we're just going to go add it up. We're going to put in about a gallon and a half of cold water so when we add that hot wort it brings the temperature down to a fermentable uh, temperature. Okay, so we're just going to add that cold water to the fermenter. 
So we add that fermented wort, unfermented wort. Let's go do one more package. We've sanitized this uh, strainer. We're gonna rinse it with hot water also before we uh, strain our wort into the fermenter. So we're gonna add this uh, hot pot of wort into a cold bath of water to lower the temperature. Careful not to add any water, which wouldn't hurt any, either way. We'll just add some cold water, get that down to a temperature where it won't burn us before we turn it, uh, pour it into the fermenter. Okay, so we're gonna come and take this uh, wort we're going to pour it through our strainer to collect everything else that we don't want in the, the fermenter. This could be kind of painstaking, but you just kind of take it as it is, do what you got to do. So we've chilled the wort, kind of take a few stages because of the hops. We'll kind of plug up our uh, strainer. We'll set that down. We just do what we got to do. You can see we'll just uh, filter off this strainer and go filter some more. We don't want that hot in the in the word. It's okay that it's in the word, but it makes it it makes it unclear to bottle, and that changes our flavor. We want to get all the the wort or all the hops out of the wort. Kind of keep doing it in several stages. Third time, we're just gonna keep adding the hops, adding the work through the strainer. Okay, so at this point we've pulled off a sample and it shows that we're going to be about 8% and that's about what we were shooting for, maybe a little higher than what we thought, but we do have a little bit of hop settling in the bottom so that's going to raise, that's going to hold the hydrometer up a little higher than it should be, but we know we're in the right ballpark. Okay, so we're just going to pitch our yeast in this temperature, uh, this wort that we just added. Add it in the top. Throw it in there. We're gonna grab our plug and our sterilized our plug that's gonna go in the top. We're gonna go rinse that and then we'll add in a, the airlock. Okay, so now we're gonna put our plug. We've sanitized this. Put that in the top. We've got our airlock filled up to the line that it suggests. Pop that on. We're going to let this ferment for at least two and a half to three weeks. Um, the longer we want to ferment all the sugars out so we get a dry, um, unsweet beer. We've got four gallons in here. We've tested it's going to be approximately six to seven percent depending on what our finishing uh, gravity is. And that all depends on our yeast. If our yeast can ferment all of it out, um, we've got our airlock on there that prevents any oxygen from getting in. And, uh, at the in about two weeks or 14 days we're going to add in probably some walnut chips a lot of people add in oak chips in their ipas give it that oak barrel aged flavor but we've tried i've tried some walnut chips and that seems to be pretty good gives it kind of a bitter dry flavor um, and we'll just see you in two weeks <laughs>